Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about uh, how to calculate uh, planar densities in uh, actually specifically for simple cubic, body centered cubic, and face centered cubic uh, materials. So again, a little bit of geometry uh, here, uh, but again the importance of why we even bother calculating uh, planar densities is that we're looking for, just as we saw for different structures, our closed path, specifically FCC and HCP based on the atomic packing factor, where planar density is going to give us and give us if we have a close packed planes, so CPP, instead of close packed or close packed structure. So for APF, our magic number was 0 0.74. And for planar densities, it's essentially the same kind of idea where it's this ratio varies from 0 to 1 theoretically, uh, except instead of the ratio of the volume occupied by our atoms versus the volume of the cell, here it's going to be the area occupied by our atoms versus the area of our plane. So the magic number for CPP is a bit higher, so 0 0.9069. Again, for basically circles with all the same radius r. So with that, let's do just like we did last time. And we'll start simple with the... 100 plane in simple cube. So identify that. Let's draw our simple cubic cell. And if we're looking at the 100, it's just going to be this front face right here. So, one unique trick uh, to do is to just kind of project it in 2D. So I'm just going to draw it right here, and I've got atoms here. So for my planar density, it is going to be, so the number of atoms, again, times the area that's cut through. So now, this isn't the surface area of the sphere. It's the area that's kind of cut through by the plane. So it's just going to be number of atoms times pi r squared over the area of plane. So, finding the kind of number of uh, atoms is a little bit more difficult, but again, just kind of imagine, again, this kind of sh this idea of sharing atoms. So, our next kind of plane would be here, and we'd have another plane here, and you'd have another plane here. Obviously, this is not drawn to scale, but it illustrates the key point that each corners for kind of any rectangular or square are going to be shared, uh, basically a fourth contribution. So, for this example, for simple cubic, we just have one atom. So 1 times pi r squared. We know from our previous uh, kind of adventures in describing uh, the dimensions of unit cells that uh, a is going to be equal to 2r for simple cubic. So it is just going to be a squared for this plane. This is something to be careful of. This is a. This is a. So we are just going to have and end up with. 4 r squared. Those cancel, and we're left with pi over 4, which is definitely not uh, CPP. Excellent. So let's look at another plane and another kind of, uh, you can do the same calculation for FCC, for BCC, for this particular plane. Uh, you'll actually go through that uh, if you're in my Engineering 45 class in your uh, problem sets. Uh, but for this purpose, let's just kind of move on to uh, kind of what we'd assume to be the next closest packed plane in BCC, which is the 110 plane. So let's erase and let's try this again. So let's get the 110 in BCC. Draw it over here as usual. Here. Here and our central atom. So let's get a different color to kind of show the plane. This, 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 this. Again, do our projection. And now we have here, 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 and here. So, same procedure, a quarter on the edges. So now we have one right in the center, 
and then a quarter on the edges, four four edges, uh, four corners, sorry. Uh, and we will have two atoms times pi r squared. Now, the mistake people make, especially after going through that uh, simple cubic example, is they always assume that it's going to be a uh, squared, essentially. But for this example, this distance here is root 2a. So this is root 2a. This is a. And this is root 2a. So we will have a squared times root 2 as our area right here. And we know uh, from previous, again, previous experiences for writing those dimensions for BCC and FCC that A equals 4 over root 3. So, uh, sorry for getting, let me move this actually over here. I have those in mind. So A equals 4 R over root 3. If you do the math, you'll figure out that this is approximately 0 0.589. And that is not a close packed plane. Because remember, our magic number, right up here at the top, 0 0.9069. Now, even though this isn't a close packed plane, in BCC, and actually in any material, we are still interested actually in uh, the closest packed plane in a, in a structure. So for BCC, the 110 plane is the closest packed plane. And that's going to be important because when we think about dislocations and kind of mechanical properties of materials, you're going to kind of see slip uh, predominantly along close pack planes or in close pack planes and along close pack directions. So even though this is not a close pack plane, uh, it will still be important uh, when we kind of think about uh, mechanical properties, especially dislocation motion. All right. So let's try one more example and we're going to look at the 111 plane in FCC. And you'll notice that, uh, not to give it away, but there are no close pack planes uh, in structures that are not inherently close pack. So you actually can't have a close pack plane in BCC or simple cubic. And there's actually only one you know, family essentially planes that are close pack to FCC. So 111 in FCC. Draw my cell again. My, all the atoms that we have in FCC. Now let's draw our plane. One, one, one. No, sorry, I'm gonna have to erase. Actually, don't have to. It's a little ugly. We'll kind of do the projection. So it actually, you know, intersects. Yeah, that was not good. <laughs> uh, it intersects this atom. Yeah. Let me switch. So it crosses through this atom, this atom here, which is over here, this atom, this atom, this atom, and this atom. A little bit clearer on the, that's why we draw the projections. So. A couple of kind of uh, distinctions here. So uh, we see we cross through, you know, six atoms in general. So now the same rule of uh, for a rectangular or for square kind of planes doesn't apply, obviously, for triangles. Um, and this is an equilateral triangle, as we could see. And we know that this distance is 4R, 4R, 4R. So the next plane is actually going to be this, this plane here, this, and then there's another one that will extend them here. And essentially you'll see kind of this almost hexagonal like uh, basically symmetry uh, develop. It's a little bit, sorry. And here, I'll get one more here. A little bit messy, but here we can count one, two, three, four, five, six planes that share these corner atoms. So each of these are one six contribution, but we could see here that these will contribute a half. So we end up 
in total with a number, a total number of atoms. So one half, one half, one half. So one and a half plus a half will give us two atoms times pi r squared. And if you remember back to geometry, which I definitely didn't, I had to look this back up, the area for an equilateral triangle is just going to be root 3 over 4 times this side, which will give kind of this name x, x squared. And once you plug in, uh, so x is equal to 4 r. Once you plug in, we find that this plane gives us our magic number. So the 111 plane is a closed packed plane in a closed packed structure, which is FCC. Uh, and so we found our kind of one closed packed plane. So again, you could extend this and do this for virtually any kind of uh, plane that you're interested in to calculate planar density. Uh, the one thing to be careful of is, you know, again, count the number of atoms here. Make sure you are uh, kind of making sure you're calculating these kind of side distances correctly to get the area of the plane. Uh, and after that, make sure everything cancels out, get a value, you know, you can't be above this value. Uh, that's dictated kind of by, again, geometrical uh, kind of proofs. You can kind of prove that to yourself. Um, yep, yeah, that's about it. So we will move on next time and talk about uh, kind of one of my coolest, actually my, one of my favorite tools uh, in kind of quantifying structure, especially structure for non-metallic materials, which are the cool materials like polymers. Um, uh, specifically, we'll look at the pair distribution function or the radial distribution function and how that works. Yeah. See you all next time.